Yep. Hi, I'm Tina Hill. I'm with Lady Zimbal and I. Christine is traveling this weekend, so it's just me. But we're here with the hottest band in the villages, um, Relic. <laughs> and if you guys could just um, introduce yourself and what instrument or what you uh, your sure. So I'm Jeremy, and I play bass and make stupid jokes most of the time. <laughs> My name's Jared, I'm on the keys, I also play a little bit of percussion and background vocals. I'm Mitch and I sing occasionally and play the guitar. Uh, I'm Zach, I play the lead guitar. And I'm Preston. <laughs> I play the drums. Okay. So can you guys talk about like how you came together, um, how long you've been together and how you came together as a band? And is it true that you guys met in church? Yes it is. I can start with that. You should follow up with it too. I think. Um, yeah. So Mitchell is a worship leader at San Lando United no. Methodist Church in Longwood, Florida, and uh, we have all either played music there or uh, served in other capacities. I have done sound there for several years and played and sang. And so I knew Mitchell for a while. And, uh, I said, we should probably start a band. I think at the time, you were still in college, and he was like, I'm too busy with finals, man. I can't oh, do it. And then as soon as he was done, we're like, no, we're doing this, and we're doing it right now. Um, I, you could probably speak better to how, many, how long everybody was playing at the church, but it's been a few yeah. years, I think, for different people, right? Right. Well, I think you guys, you and Preston, interviewed about the same time. And so, yeah, I think you and Preston entered at the same time. So five, six. Years. Probably about five, six, five years at that point. Um, and then vicariously, I mean, Zach played for us for a few things, and Jared as well. And then, yeah, I was, I think, in my senior year of college, and you're like, we need to start a band. And I was like, I am so busy right now. Like, there is no way. And uh, when I got less busy, then we did the thing. So, yeah. <laughs> and here we are. Exactly. That was that was in fallish of last year. I think our first our first thing was at the Hard Rock in Tampa. We were at the Hard <laughs> we're at the Hard Rock in Tampa, <laughs> and um, I, that's when we started with a, another guitarist who's also his name was also Zach. And then too many Zachs. The, the, yeah, too many Zachs. way too many Zachs. This Zach up in was way better. Are you no two Zach, 10 point. Wow. <laughs> wow. Um, and then uh, Jared, the, the keys here, I've known since high school, so we've known each other for over 10 years. And he came to our show without keys. We played, I mean, Journey and Queen without piano, which was awful and terrible. Yeah. So he offered his services, and I vouched for him, and he just he meshed as soon as he started. So we've been this vibe, I think, since October of last year. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, what's what's the story behind the name Relic? And does it have any special meaning or significance? And and why did you change it from the Ooh, I want to answer that from everybody from the middle. Because I didn't want to be yes. like in a band that was named after me. Like I there's a there's a person that we I think unanimously are not super big fans of uh, that I don't want to name right now. And I didn't want to be associated with that kind of band. So, um, Ironically, I don't know what you say it's referring to. <laughs> so, this is great, actually. <laughs> oh, wow. wow. That guy. Okay. Or that girl. Oh. Uh, uh, but, uh, so how did you choose the name Relic? How did Relic come well, up? Well, how did... And so then what does it mean? Does it have sure, any special it. meaning? Sure. So basically... It came about a couple of ways. We're talking about what is the vibe of the band. So obviously we play classic rock songs from the 70s and 80s. And we really like that sound. And that's kind of when we write original and new songs, that's kind of the sound that it sounds like. And so that's old, right? Um, the word relic is essentially meaning something that's old or ancient. It also means something that's rare and hard to find and something that has a value. So I think where we hit all of those marks is the stuff we play is old or it sounds old. Um, the rarity is that we don't use tracks. Everything we do is live and made by the people that are on the stage at that moment. 
that's rare. There's a lot of bands that play and sound really good, um, and they use background tracks, and we don't have anything against those people. We use tracks at church. It's all good. It, there ha it serves a purpose, but with this band, we don't do that, and so that's rare. And that has a value because if you like what we do, it's like, that's happening right now in front of your face. It's a real live organic experience. It's never going to happen again. So that's kind of how the name came about. And uh, I think I think we're going to keep it. Okay. I was just saying, what, what were some contenders that didn't make it for the new band name? Were there other names you? Oh, MK Ultra. Ones. That was yes. my favorite. What was it? We had some funny ones. Oh, yeah. Like, Agreed. Beat Brigade. <laughs> we had some ones thanks to uh, Chat GPT. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah we had yeah, some yeah, really, yeah, really yeah, terrible yeah, yeah. ones. Really funny ones. <laughs> Um, but going on the band's name, Jimmy Buffett has the Parrot Heads, Justin Bieber has oh, the Believers, yeah. Beyonce has the Beehive. What would you want Relic fans to be called? Been, because yeah. our camerawoman Rachel, her husband thinks that it should be the Fossils. <laughs> yeah, the oh, Fossils <laughs> are great. I love that. <laughs> or the Artifacts. Or maybe or you guys, artifacts, the artifacts. I was going to say the ancient engage, Relics, but it's terrible. You guys engage with your fans a lot, like yeah. online and Facebook and yeah. if you did a poll or maybe you just named yeah. them. Yeah, we, we should figure that out. My only concern with leaning too hard into the relic angle of it yeah. is that not all of our fans are villagers. Right. And, <laughs> and may not want to be a fossil. Person. And maybe, oh, yeah. exactly. Okay. And maybe not all of the villagers embrace that idea either. I don't know. But it is super funny. Okay. And I, I think it's kind of great. Um, do any of you have a special influence or inspiration for your music? Uh, drugs. No. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> or any person? Is there anyone that inspires any of you? Or are you? I, I know what Mitchell's answer is. Um, I'll give you my top three. Um, <laughs> Preston's like, give me a it's break. Like, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Preston, you got one, man. <laughs> That's right. Uh, Jesus. One, yeah, Jesus. I mean, that, that, that better be good. Yeah. Um, no, musically, uh, Robert Plant, um, Steven Tyler. I think are the top three for me. Yeah. Um, yeah. What about anybody else? Zach? No, I'll, I'll do it. Uh, I mean, these are going to be guitarists. Maybe you guys uh, know Paul Gilbert from Mr. Big. Just a crazy shredder. First time I saw him like on a YouTube video, just shredding the guitar live. It was like 1991 video, the day I was born. I saw that in like 2010, and I'm like, I want to do that. It's like that. That's how we got into shredding. Like, uh, uh, let's see, another one. Uh, Rick Graham, who's more of a YouTube guitarist, but he's like one of the first YouTube guitarists out there. He's got a huge following, one of the greatest guitarists on the planet. And I'm actually fortunate enough to be able to take lessons from him right now. I feel like I'll always take lessons. You never, you never stop learning. Uh, I'll be taking lessons until I'm like 70 years old. There's always like so much to learn. And maybe the third, uh, if you guys know him, Vinny Moore, he's the, well now he's the guitarist for UFO, another like famous like new classical shredder, but yeah, love him. I like Neil Peart from a little band known as Rush, um, and I have a fun story about him. My dad was going to take me, I think a week before we learned about his passing, he was going to come to the, the now Kia Center, which is a little band now. We were going to go. My dad gave me the tickets in the morning of everybody learned he had. It was like the back of the ring. Like, I'm sorry, buddy, this is going to be your best present I've ever given you. And it got taken away. So I was like, hey, it's not the counts, but I'm Neil now. So, next question. Um, what, what's the most adrenaline-filled filled, uh, moment you've experienced while performing live? Oh, Battle of the Bands is a big one. Sure. Yeah, that was Battle of the Bands is pretty. I think we don't. I think we don't have. How was that? How was the Battle of the Bands? Uh, Nerve-wracking because the other bands were so good. I, me How many did you compete against? Twelve. Technically, it was. 11. 11 is one of them dropped out. It was supposed to be 12, but 11 showed up. So, yeah. But I came in, personally, I came in thinking it's going to be a bunch of bands from downtown Orlando that play the, the clubs or something like Tank Rays or these smaller Orlando bands. No, it's the best bands that have been in the central Florida area. <laughs> so, so I come in like, I think we're going to be okay. And then hear the music happening and they're together and everything's good and we're not, we're not the only ones here. 
Yeah. And when did you win? You you won the whole battle? Yeah, we won the whole thing, yeah. Okay. Yay! So, so the prize was a little bit of money, but mostly we were playing for Red Hot and Boo, which is the city of Altamont Springs' is big Independence Day celebration. And the big reason that's important is because it's huge. Hundreds of thousands of people showed up. I think it was 250,000 people last year. And so I think that will be our biggest adrenaline rushing moment. So it's yet to come. And I'm willing to bet that <laughs> because, yeah. That, a lot of adrenaline, too, is going to come from the floating sage that we're going to be performing. Yeah. Oh. So that's going to be very yeah. interesting. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Um, how did you get your first job playing in the villages? Um, sheer willpower. So, uh, so Zach and I have played in the villages with different bands. Um, we both played with Johnny Wild, and Zach is still playing with Fancy Reagan and uh, Daisy Fever. Right? Um, I'm playing with Hacksaw Hamlin, and so we, we've all been up here, um, and I knew this would be a good fit. I just knew it. So I took the videos that we had and sent them in, and I don't know, we had a video several videos with Tennessee whiskey and we played a bunch of things but we had a video of somebody we love uh, and and Mary Carlson from Villages Entertainment she uh, sorry she called me on the phone 20 minutes after I hit send on ah. the email she was like hey uh, just got your thing I uh, like your video uh, I'd like to start scheduling you guys I have never seen a single band ever even attempt somebody to love my queen and you guys absolutely killed them so let's start booking some shows and we're like okay so we love it we've been playing this october and we've been playing up here ever since um do you have a favorite venue within the villages that you play brownwood yeah. I mean, without, without questions yeah. it's become number one. It, it feels like uh you know because of the stadium seating and everything it feels like a real concert the other squares are fun i like sumter because you get that 360 feeling you get people all around you that's fun yeah, exactly. <laughs> the lake and all that. But this this really feels like a rock concert, so we love coming to Brown. What are some of the crowd pleasers that you play that you know that all I I would say separate ways, but I don't yes, know. Right? You, you, that's a good one. <laughs> separate ways when we do it, uh, don't stop believing is um, Here I go again. That one's Black great. Dog. Yeah. Black Dog, people love that. Yeah. Carry on, Wayward Son. Yeah. Uh, 90% of the stuff. Yeah, there's yeah. someone in the crowd that goes, <laughs> Oh my God, this is, is prom. Right. This is my prom song. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. My Sirona. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what are each of your favorite songs to play? Right. Either in the villages oh. or somewhere else. Like, what's your favorite? I'm going to say, uh, Rocky Like a Hurricane. <laughs> no, that gives me chills every time we play it. It's, it's yeah. Awesome. Um, I'll say Black Dog. Yeah. Fine choice. I'd say Carry On, Wayward Son. Oh, just because yeah. The vocals and everyone's part in that song, we're just locked and loaded. We love it. I just love, love playing the that song. I'm going to say Tom Sawyer just to see what you say next. <laughs> I was actually going to say Carry On. Oh, uh, I, was, and, I was too, actually. And, and Tom Sawyer. And I guess my third one would be Separate Ways because I've known that song since I think I was four years old. <laughs> so I'm like, Let's play the drums better this time. Yeah, you know, 25 years later. So, so um, tell me about your first original song, Fly. Is that the name of your original yes, song? Yes, it is. Okay. Original. <laughs> Everybody's like, what are you talking about? Yeah, that's not so, a thing. The original song's called Fly. Um, it's got this this Texas outlaw feel going into a, if anybody knows the band Muse, it goes into just this angelic chorus. So the, the goal was we need something that's going to punch first. So we don't need something easy to kind of fall back on. We need something that's going to lift up ears and something for people to hear and go, what what just happened? And then the song drops back. We try it again and then go back into it and then get harder and then bigger and bigger. So we're kind of pulling from there's some Aerosmith vibes in there, there's Muse vibes in there, there's some Zeppelin vibes in there, boo. There's other, there's just. There's just a lot of pulls into this one, I think, amalgamation conglomerate song that's kind of just being pasted okay. into the. Can you can you tell me what's yeah. this? Does there is there any special significance when you sing "It's a Man's World"? It's kind of a little bit different than your 
Um, it's beautiful, and it's one of my favorite songs. Yeah, it's, especially uh, with Pavarotti when they do oh, yeah. it. Yeah, it's funny. Like I actually, I learned about that song through uh, two two videos that I saw online. One was for Stapleton in a random bar in Nashville, and somebody asked them to come on stage and play that song. Chris Stapleton, by all accounts, is not technically a a, a soul or, or funk singer, but I mean he's Chris Stapleton, right? So sick, whatever. Um, yeah, and uh, and then I saw the video of Pavarotti. I'm a classical trained opera singer. I studied that in college. He was like my opera hero. So um, yeah, I, I saw the video and I was like, man, this song is just awesome. And of course, I mean anything James Brown does is awesome, but. We actually have a whole James Brown, Stevie Wonder thing that we do. And we have done it on the squares, but we do a whole lot more rock stuff now. But we kind of bring those things out as we need to, you know. Your bag of tricks? Uh, yes. Yeah. Okay. That's a, that's a thing that not everybody knows. About <laughs> us. So how is playing in the villages different than playing in other places, other venues? You know what I've found is that the response we've gotten, look, first of all, look, I'm super proud of this band. Relic is an awesome group of guys. We have a good time together and we sound great. But the Villages has treated us like such rock stars. Yeah, everybody has been so invested in this band and I don't think I think we've had like some success and response other I places. Think so. But this here, I don't know, man. It's been on another level. It's been I don't know. I can't, I'm trying to think of the word, but it just it's just really felt like, wow, we are being treated like so great. And I don't know, I think people see the, the chemistry that we have on stage and they respond to that. Um, anybody else have any thoughts? What am, what am I missing here? Nope, you nailed it. Okay, no? okay good. Uh, I know we're short on time, so the, you mentioned what were some of the other bands you played with? You played uh, with? Johnny Wilde. And I've played briefly with Fancy Reagan, but Zach currently is playing with Fancy and with Daisy Beaver. Yeah, uh, Fancy Reagan, Johnny, I still play with Johnny Wild sometimes. Uh, Daisy Beaver, I already said that. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm, uh, another band called Stare FM, I've been with them uh, for five years. Uh, they don't play the villages, but they're kind of uh, outside of Orlando. So that's about it. Where else outside of the villages do you play? Well, we play uh, the Hard Rock in Tampa. And. Um, about to play for the city of Altamont Springs for Red Hot on the 3rd of July. Uh, also, we're going to play at SeaWorld August 3rd for Bands, Moves, and Barbecue. And beyond that, we will let you know. Oh, yeah, we do we have, have a cruise. cruise. Hey, thanks for that. We have a cruise coming up. Uh, Next detail, year. Yeah, details soon, but November 2025. Would that be playing like every day? Probably not every day. It'll be something every day. Uh, we'll probably do nights. We'll probably also have random like sing karaoke with Mitchell times, jam with Preston times, you know, <laughs> dueling pianos with Jeremy and Jared. I'm making this up. Yeah. Everybody's like, what is what are you saying? <laughs> right. So so uh it'll be it'll a, be fun. It'll be fun. We'll be around and hanging out with everybody. How, how are villager fans now. different than other fans and fans yeah. elsewhere? Oh very let's say ardent enthusiasts yes <laughs> Everybody. do you have any super fans here oh yes yeah. oh my goodness yes it's it's been great and, and you're i'm thank you for bringing that up because we do need to have a name for that <laughs> and i don't know that uh that maybe you need like a, a contest a poll or something i think so and throw some ideas so. out there we uh probably go. need to wrap up how can great. your fans show your appreciation as the Reverend James Brown once said, buy my record and come and see my show. That's why James Brown loves you so. And where can they find you on Facebook, uh, Everything YouTube? Everything is uh, Relic Band Official. So Facebook and YouTube and Instagram and TikTok is Relic Band Official. Uh, email us at relicbandofficial at gmail.com. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Okay. Hold on, guys.